That's a long way back. I came in, I think, 1949. And uh, this place, uh, the world has changed a lot. And this place has changed a lot. I mean, Madison, you know, I came because it had the reputation of being a great research university. And it was. But the research was very specialized, you know. It's agricultural research. It was history. The history department was very strong. Political science. Um, but art certainly was not. Uh, music was not. Uh, you know, it was a, a, a place of big contrasts in, in the scholarship, in the, um, the focus of the scholarship. Um, there were no galleries in this town, no museums, not much in the way of music, uh, you know. They had just built the auditorium for the Wisconsin Union and Frank Lloyd Wright gave a lecture there. And that was our great, that was the place where the, the uh, concerts were. Um, but it was on the upgrade, you know. I mean, new people came in uh, um, and uh, it got better and it got better. And that's why I stayed because I had the sense, you know, of uh, that, the job that I took, I could see where it was going. I could see they were building a, uh, a new art department. We were in the School of Education, but uh, we did. We did get a new dean who was building, and they were hiring, doing wonderful hires. Uh, hiring young, um, hiring energetic people, hiring very good young artists, and I put myself in that <laughs> because we uh, we began uh, we began to have an, an excellent department, and you have the chance then uh, to not only work in in a, a good university uh, department with support gathering support from the administration, from the graduate school. Uh, we had some wonderful graduate deans. And, um, but uh, you had the opportunity to build um, the area that you wanted to work in. Uh, and uh, as I was getting more and more interested in prints, I could see um, that there was an opportunity uh, to, to really get very deep into a specific area of prints that was at attractive to me. And I had decided, I, I was well into prints at that point. I, I had had a New York show of my uh, serographs. The serographs did very well. And uh, um, uh, but I, I was intrigued by etching. Um, we, we had at Wisconsin, a person who taught the prints there, Alfred Sessler, um, was a very nice person, very generous uh, uh, artist. And uh, so you could use his studio and he would show you things, and he showed me the rudiments of uh, etching. And uh, it, it seemed attractive. Um, I, I was a little bothered by the way my screen prints were developing. I really wanted to get a little more depth in them. Um, serigraphy is a hard material, you know, it's, um, it's essentially stencils. It's stencils, but uh, a little looser, a little more textural. Um, but I wanted a lot of texture. I wanted line. I wanted a, a way to really get 
fine line to get deeper. Uh, the uh, serigraphy could not give me what painting gave me. And I wanted a print technique that was closer to my, my paintings. Um, and, and so I, I thought that uh, etching uh, would fill the bill. And so that's, I, I applied for a Fulbright in, to study etching in London and the, the place there that was a, a very fine place with a, a notable program was the Slade School at the University of London. So that's where I ended up and uh, I, I lucked out again. I, I've, been, I've been lucky most of my life, I think. <laughs> yeah, it really was, yeah. So I say I lucked out. <clears throat> it was the luck of the draw, but um, the uh, instructor uh, at Slade was Anthony Gross, who <clears throat> was a very fine artist. Uh, he's not very well known here, but uh, he had a big reputation in Europe. And uh, he had worked, uh, uh, Hayter was a friend of his. He, Hayter was not really an influence. Um, he was a colleague, you know. He, he knew all about uh, Hayter's uh, work in, in Paris. Uh, they were old friends. And uh, he had also uh, uh, been a professor at the Academy in Madrid. And uh, so he was a European. He was married to a French woman and uh, uh, they kept a, a place in the French countryside, which later on he would in, invite me down with my wife. We've spent several v visits uh, w with them. Um, and uh, so we, we got along excellently. Uh, I was at that time at Madison, I think I was an assistant professor and so forth, but I became Tony Gross's studio assistant. Um, Gross's position at, at Slade, it was just a little strange um, because um, uh, etching was um, a, a minor. It was a minor, it wasn't a major subject. At, at Slade, they taught painting and they taught sculpture. And then they had a few things. They had a litho shop and they had the etching shop and they might have had some crafts somewhere. And so the students had a requirement to take a little work in these other minor things. And so uh, what Tony Gross got for students were the painters and the sculptors. They had to be doing a little work there. So they would come in for 10 minutes and they'd do some wretched little plate, you know, and then they'd take off. And so he was very frustrated by the quality, uh, uh, not, not the quality of the students, but the amount of attention they gave to this subject that he felt was extremely important. And I felt it was extremely important. And so I volunteered to be his uh, uh, studio assistant. So what could be better? I really learned, you know, I learned the acids. Uh, I took, uh, you know, I mixed the acids and uh, uh, kept them nice and fresh. And I, I, I learned the rudiments of uh, the technique. And, and there are a lot of them. And uh, so I had this great year where I kind of did the dirty work and uh, I mixed the inks, I ground ink, you know. Uh, and when I first started teaching etching here, one of the requirements I made the students do, much to their horror, they had to grind their own black ink <laughs> from powder. <laughs> And uh, uh, they hated it. <laughs> the plate's here. Oh, I love this yeah, plate. no. This is a plate I, I'm working on now. Oh, this is and uh, what is this about? 
Well, this is about New Orleans, which is uh, uh, a lot of the things that I have been dealing with um, in recent years are uh, prints that derive from uh, narratives that come out of uh, Louisiana uh, and particularly uh, New Orleans. This, this, it's, this is it's kind of hard to see, but it's about uh, Mardi Gras. And at one point, point in, in Mardi Gras, the crews that uh, control the, the various uh, floats, uh, they're clubs and uh, they give a big raucous party and extravaganza. And it's open to the public uh, to a certain amount. And so this is, is one of these uh, crew parties that I'm working at. Actually, the, the plate's at a difficult point right now because it's uh, somewhat underbitten. And I'll show you, I've got uh, a second plate that I'm just beginning that's on, on my uh, drafting table in the, in the back. But, uh, you know, it's very possible to silk screen onto a plate if you want to add color that way or detail. Any any material that you want to, to add, there's no reason why you can't just put this into a uh, un, under a screen in a little rig and squeegee your ink, uh, put it on the surface, take it through the press. Um, the only problem is that then you have to immediately stop and you have to clean your screen. <laughs> Uh, so it's, it's a great deal of added labor and also the fumes. Uh, you know, I, I really don't do screen printing anymore and uh, uh, the technique has come a long way since I used to do it. You know, it was strictly oil-based uh, inks that, that I used. And I found much simpler ways to get the same effects. So I, uh, I simply do stencils. I, I do a lot of relief work on my plates, but it's much easier to uh, use rollers and stencils rather than to use the, the screens. Um, uh, yeah, but uh, you know, it's any, anything is possible. Location can just, uh, because this is interesting and it goes into the technique. You see, this is uh, the proof that I'm working from of uh, the, the thing over there. And uh, I, it needs reinforcing because it's underbitten because the, the problem is uh, in the winter uh, when, the, uh, when it's so cold uh, and the heat in the studio uh, varies, uh, your acids are less predictable than uh, they usually are. And so, yes, sometimes the results are just a little unexpected. And so this is a second plate that I'm developing so I can strengthen things that are happening on, on the first plate. And uh, this, it's a soft ground. And I've been uh, drawing, so you can you can see I think more in the drawing than you can see in the plate because I'm just hitting the plate in certain places where I feel the line and the detail needs a little strengthening, and at the same time I'm trying to make it a little wilder, and so I'm adding, uh, uh, you know more things to the uh, chorus. And uh, so this is really, it's about ready to go in the acid. And uh, so probably tomorrow I'll, I'll, I'll bite uh, this plate. It's backed and it's, it's ready to go. Can you get a close up of a little Yeah, but plate? don't, 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 don't touch. touch it. Because it's a soft ground. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Or a close up. <laughs> so you're going to make it wilder? Yeah. 
Exactly. That's the it idea. It looks pretty wild there. How, how, how much wilder? <laughs> well, if you look the uh, down in this corner, I girls here, mm -hmm. I want to. They, I want to have them really kicking, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this, and I, I this? really. This is a like a, a dancer there. Yes. Stripper. Yeah, this is you know silly acts, silly acts, but but kind of big costumes lots of color and so forth and uh, so i have hopes for it a lot of work to to go on but uh and so the rest of this 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 is louisiana corner down here uh, everything from uh uh the battle of uh, 1815 <laughs> so you said this is Louisiana corner here? Yeah, yeah. These are all uh, Louisiana things. We have a condo down there. And uh, if you want to walk anywhere, you have to cross Bourbon. And so this is crossing Bourbon, which is an, an experience. So, so these are all New Orleans. Is another crossing bourbon with uh, the dog. This is not this dog. This was really uh, the last dog. What, what do you love most about New Orleans? What's your... Oh, the activity. It is, you know, it's full of narration. It's full of all kinds of narration. Color, color. Uh, the people are very colorful, and it's there's a kind of an underpinning of uh, literature and uh, history, too. You know, it's a rundown city, uh, and it's full of art and music. This is on the other side of the quarter, where you're crossing a rampart. And that's a little more dangerous. And the restaurants. And okay. so far, I, <laughs> I've, got them. I've got them. Okay. And the, uh, the history. history. This, I wanted to do one as a tribute this to the fun. great photographer, um, E.J. Belloc, whose area was to film the prostitutes his friends, the prostitutes. And so this is, and this is a very recent uh, print, which is uh, about the prostitution, really. It's uh, about Storyville, which was closed by the Navy uh, during the First World War. But the great salons, the great salons, and uh, Louis Armstrong uh, played in the uh, houses in Storyville, which is just a few blocks from our condo. And then this is the same theme, but uh, painting, painting this time. And I think that's about as far as I can go. No, I got him. I got him. Anyway, that's my show. So this was the uh, final uh, addition on, onto the studio. And uh, uh, this is Fran's place. And uh, it's, it's a mess, but it's an organized mess, I think. And uh, because she does, she works on the floor, she works on the wall and so forth. And uh, so you, you do see a, a busy, a busy studio.
with uh, lots of activity and the things that uh, lead into the art itself, the, the various technical gadgets, 